Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Furman, for that presentation. It was very informative. So uh, we'll begin the Q&A portion of the presentation. For the audience, if you're interested in asking Dr. Furman a question, please raise your hand in Zoom. We place the instructions for how to do so in the chat. No, we don't take instruction or we don't take questions directly from the chat. So uh, if you do want to ask a question, go ahead and raise your hand. And um, within or with that, so according to research that Michael Greger talks about, um, high cholesterol levels are linked to an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. What are the underlying causes of, of Alzheimer's disease, dementia, and memory loss? Uh, additionally, are there specifically uh, supported methods to prevent these conditions? Well, I actually covered that here. Um, suggesting that memory loss with aging has multiple contributing factors, including mostly in the standard American diet, you have lack of nutrients in the diet, lack of phytochemicals and antioxidants, and you have atherosclerosis leading to deoxygenation of the brain and an inflammatory bowel, inflammatory microbiome, and inflammatory cell and toxic substances coming from the digestive, coming from what you're eating. So all these things play, and the omega-3 index plays a role. I was just looking in the chat box and a good example of somebody getting confused by another speaker, a perfect example, where one of the other speakers said a high level of omega-3 supplementation increases risk of atrial fibrillation. And so discouraging people from supplementing, giving people the false, a false view of the science. I discussed that in my book, The End of Heart Disease, just like I discussed vitamin D. The point is, because you can show a study taking excessive amounts of fish oil increases is not good for the heart or the immune system. It doesn't mean deficiencies are not as good for it. It's the sweet spot in the middle. We want to keep our omega-3 index between five, five and eight. So high dose fish oil is also unfavorable, just like high dose vitamin D is unfavorable. So these people can't, you know, so there's a lot of, I'm giving examples because there's a lot of improper inflammation given at, given at these conferences where hundreds of people speak and give conflicting information. Remember, too little of something is bad and too much of something is bad. And to be able to look at, to be able to approach a question, you have to look at all the studies and be able to interpret them in an unbiased manner, weighing them and seeing, okay, this is saying, this is, so in other words, I'm, I showed an overwhelming amount of corroborative evidence showing deficiencies are dangerous but that doesn't mean excessive is good for you either, right? So we wanna be in that sweet spot and that's for all nutrients, right? We wanna be in the sweet spot of maximum lifespan for all these nutrients. Right, so to your point, it does get very challenging to know who's right about what, you know, we, you have, uh, you know, very, you know, renowned people yourself. You have Dr. Esselstyn, who, when he's dealing specifically with cardiovascular uh, patients with serious heart disease, likes to keep them on on a, a, a low fat diet and he avoids seeds and nuts. Did you listen to this presentation? Yes. You did. So I addressed that. I addressed right. that when a person has heart disease, you are still better than what they're eating and you get results but you're increasing their risk of an irregular heartbeat or atrial fibrillation. You're not giving them maximum chance of survival, but put it by taking all the nuts and seeds. And I showed more than 20 studies that, that you can't ignore all these studies just because one doctor has an opinion and has some patients that did well. I, I also published studies showing my patients do well with heart disease reversal without increasing their risk of atrial fibrillation or irregular heartbeat due to nut and seed exclusion. So I think I'm being very clear about that, that we right. have well, to investigate the overwhelming amount of evidence on that particular question. Right. I, I think, well, my, my, my point is still the same, that it gets very confusing to, to the audience. And you say one thing, and I know what you're saying, you know, in contradiction to what Dr. Elson says, and yet he's had, you know, you know, a few hundred people in a study at, that he's kept them alive for, for decades, which, all, you know, and, and, and in thriving health. Um, so it does get confusing. Then you add, uh, the, then you add uh, Dr. Popper, who is talking about confounding factors with vitamin D, where the, the you know vitamin D, we look at it and say people, oh, these people are sick, and oh, they have you know they have low D, and she's saying that these people are sick, and therefore their D goes down, and when they get healthier, their D goes back up. Then you add to that the studies that are out there. We had we had uh, Dr. John Abramson on earlier today. I don't know if you're familiar with his work, uh, sickening. Yeah. Yes. So, 
And then you have all the lot, you know, the the confounding factors of money and you know and other motives going into published research. So it becomes very confusing for people to to keep track. So but I showed more than the meta-analysis of more than 64,000 cardiovascular deaths and how much deaths increase when you exclude nuts and seeds from the diet. You can't throw that away and be blinded. You can't be blinded to an overwhelming amount of evidence. You know, so you're looking at personal, so that's correct. I mean, there are people, have, I have my studies, other people have their studies. We both get good results. But when we're looking at, is it, is it gonna be safe for people to do that and not, pro not produce any possible problems, we have to be careful because there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that you get more problems when you restrict fat to that degree. And a lot of leading researchers, not just myself, but Dr. Ornish and others, have tried to mitigate that by including essential fats and nuts and seeds back in the diet from all this evidence that's come out. I'm so not arguing have... this one way or the other. My point is it's very confusing to the layperson. I don't uh, think it should be confusing to the layperson. I well, think I, I guarantee you as a lay person and with, you know, based on the, the things that the audience say. That's it, why I gave this lecture, because I wanted to show people the overwhelming amount of evidence to help make it bring some clarity so they don't have to be feel that these things are so controversial.